Good morning. Take a seat. Chapter 20, working in the construction phase. In this chapter, we will explore the use of Autodesk Revit software in the construction phase by design teams and builders. For architecture design teams, the use of Revit usually entails markups, sketches, and revision management. However, a builder may approach building information modeling tools in unique ways. Many different BIM programs are available for builders to use in pre-construction and construction phase tasks. So we will not assume that Revit is the primary tool used by the majority of them. In this chapter, you'll learn to add revisions to your project, use digital markups, and model for construction. Using revisions in your project, revisions allow designers and builders to make changes made to a set of construction documents during the construction phase of a project. Because the construction documents usually consist of numerous sheets, this methodology allows everyone on the team to track and identify which changes were made and when they were made during construction. The purpose is not only to ensure correct construction, but also to create as-built documentation, recording how the building was actually created to be delivered to building owners upon occupancy. In a typical drawing set, revisions will look like figure 20.1 when they are created and issued as part of the drawing set. Revision clouds are created within views that are placed on sheets. The revision tag is also placed within the view, but once the view is placed on a sheet, the revision like will dynamically appear in the sheet properties and on any revision schedule on the sheet. Creating a revision cloud. To create a revision cloud in your project, switch to the annotate tab in the ribbon, locate the detail panel, and then choose revision cloud. This places you in a revision cloud drawing mode, similar to sketch mode, and allows you to bubble the revised detail or drawing. When you finish, click the green check mark to complete the sketch, and your annotation is done. We'll step through this in more detail later in the chapter. You will usually have several rounds of revisions to a document set. Revit provides a way to manage the revision list and gives you the ability to name and date the various revisions in your project to better track them. The sheet issues slash revisions tool is located in two places within the application. You can find it on either the view tab in the sheet composition panel or the manage tab under additional settings. Either one of these buttons will open the Sheet Issues Revisions dialog box. Here you can add, merge, issue, and define the visibility of revisions. Before I begin creating revisions to myself, and before you begin creating revisions in your sheet set, it's good to start with this dialog box to give those revisions some order. Let's review the major components of the Sheet Issues Revisions dialog box, beginning with the table of revisions. I hope everybody has their coffee. shoe is on the other foot. Table of revisions. The sheet issues slash revision box 
starts with one default revision already in place. Even though you may not have made a revision yet, this is only to give you a place to start. No revision will appear in your title box until you add revision clouds to your views. Each revision has a fixed number of parameters that you can enter. As you can see, the parameters include numbering, date, description, and an issue checkbox. In addition to issued to and issued by, columns and options for showing clouds and tags. Numbering. The numbering option allows you to number each revision numerically, alphabetically, or not at all. If you choose an alphabetic sequence, the sequence is defined in the customized numbering options, in the numbering options box in the lower right. The numbering options box in the lower right, choose either numeric or alpha, uh, alphanumeric to set your sequence and remove letters you don't want to use. For instance, some firms don't use letter I and O because they're often confused with numbers one and zero. Respectively, this figure shows a sample of the project milestones And we're up to chapter 20. Now, let's take a look at the alphanumeric. Let's take a look at numeric. That dialog box was the uh, sample. By default, an entire alphabet appears here. It just so happens to be that way. I'll, I'll, I'll say that again. By default, an entire alphabet appears here. One more time. By default, an entire alphabet appears here. The none option allows you to add project milestones, unnumbered entries that appear in revision tables to sheets without having to add revision clouds. Date and description. Both of these fields are user-driven only. The date is not tied to any functionality within Revit, nor is the description. Both are simple text fields. However, both fields will schedule as part of your revision table on your sheets and are useful in organizing and tracking your revisions. <coughs> Issued. Issued. Deliberately. To issue a revision, click the checkbox in the issued column. Doing so locks the revision clouds and tags placed on sheets or in views associated with that revision, preventing them from being moved, deleted, or otherwise edited. The parameter values in the dialog box become inactive. This is to guarantee that the clouds and data do not change downstream once you issue a set of drawings. You can do this. This isn't an insurmountable task. Don't remain silent. This is a BIM manager note. Revisions in a live model. During the construction process, the project model may be still changing. When you issue a revision, keep in mind that although the clouds can become fixed in the project, the model will not be static as you can, as you continue to make revisions to the model, it will always be up to date. This means you might have multiple revisions in the same location on your sheet. 
So if you need to maintain an archive of all project phases or each revision, be sure to export the sheets as either DWF or PDF files as a snapshot of the sheets at time of issue. Issued to, issued by. You may enter notes to the project team in these fields for whom the revisions are to be issued and who issued them. Show this column, this table column, controls the visibility of revision clouds and revision tags that have been issued. As issues occur, you may want to hide just the clouds or just tag or just the tags from previous revisions. For example, if you've issued one revision and then add revisions to a later issue and want to clean up your drawing, you can choose to show the issued revisions that tag only. Typically, a small triangle with the revision number inside it or not show anything at all by using the none option. function is used to create a new revision. The new revision will automatically be placed in sequential order and only the sequence number will be automatically updated. You'll need to add your own description and date. Numbering radio bonds. You can choose to number revisions by sheet or by project. This is the global setting for the whole project, but one can be signed to the other at any point. Which method you choose mainly depends on how your firms or your firm chooses to track revisions. The per sheet setting allows you to have as many revisions as you want within the drawing set, but on each set, the list of revisions will remain sequential. For example, an issue named Issued for Design Development may be revision number four on one sheet and revision number seven on another. Using the per project setting will order your revision clouds based on the sequence established in the sheet issues revision dialog box. In other words, all revisions with the same issue date would have the same revision number regardless of how many revisions appear on a given sheet. This approach might give you a greater degree of consistency throughout your document set, but may limit the number of overall revisions you can use in the project. Either numbering method can be configured in advance and added to your project templates. Placing revision clouds. If you want to place a revision, open a view in which changes to the project have occurred and use the revision cloud tool found in the detail panel on the annotate tab. Let's read the uh, tooltip. Revision cloud. Add a revision cloud to the current view or sheet to indicate design areas that have changed. Use sketch tools, such as the line or rectangle, to draw the revision cloud while sketching. Press the space bar to flip the direction of the arcs in the cloud shape. Specify the minimum arc length for revision clouds in the project on the sheet issues, excuse me, revision dialog, excuse me. Use the familiar sketch from the draw panel in the contextual tab of the ribbon to generate a cloud around the area you are calling out as a revision. The tool automatically starts with the box command, allowing you to draw a box around your revision. If you'd like something more fluid, you can sketch to the line tool on the draw panel. Lines are automatically created that make a cloud or series of arcs, as I'm about to show you. The size of the arcs will be determined by the arc length setting found in the sheet issue revisions dialog box described in the previous section. When you finish creating the cloud, click the finish setting, finish sketch button, the green check mark. In the contextual tab of the ribbon, note that the revision cloud tool doesn't require it to close, to, to form a closed loop. You can finish the sketch at any point.
By default, excuse me, each new revision cloud will be assigned to the last revision in the sheet issue revisions dialog box. If you need to change the revision to which a cloud is assigned, select the cloud and use the properties palette to identify or to modify the its revision number. Revision clouds in a live model. This is a BIM manager's note. During the construction process, the project model may still be changing. As you create revisions, you might need to create more than one within the same viewer sheet. Where you place a revision cloud can be as important as the revision itself. For instance, do you place it within a view or on a sheet? As a best practice, we suggest you place the revision in the location where the content is changing. So if you're modifying a flashing detail, which I am, place the revision bubble in a view If you're changing the name of the detail on the sheet, place it on the sheet itself. This will help you downstream when you make another change to that same view or element. As soon as you have placed a revision cloud on the sheet, any revision schedules placed in your title block will update to include the revision number, the description, and the date you assigned in the sheet issues revisions dialog box earlier. Like other objects, the graphics for revision clouds are controlled from the object styles dialog box found in the settings panel on the manage tab. Settings for revisions are located on the annotate objects tab. The default settings for the line thickness is 1. We recommend you increase the default thickness for revisions in your project template to more clearly illustrate and communicate your design modifications. Tagging the revision cloud. Revision clouds can be tagged like many other elements. Similar to other tags, revision tags are intelligent and designed to report the revision number or letter that has been assigned to the revision cloud. To place a revision tag, use the tag by category tool in the tag panel on the annotate tab. If a tag for revisions is not in your template, you will be warned that no such tag exists in your project. To continue, simply load a revision tag. The default tag is named revision tag.rfa and is located in the annotations folder of the family library. 
within a standard installation. Once you have a tag loaded, you are ready to tag revision clouds. However, you should hover around first, ascertain, quantify, analyze, and then hover the cursor over a revision cloud and click to place the tag. You will see a preview of the tag prior to placing it. Once the tag is placed, you can drag it around the cloud to reposition it and turn the leader on and off. With or without a leader, the revision tag will stay associated with the cloud. Disabling the leader. Nice try. I'm going to give you an opportunity to catch up. Disabling the leader. You can choose. You can choose. Show priority. You can choose. Friend of thought. You can choose to use a leader line between the tag and the cloud, depending on your preference or your office standards. In many cases, the tag just needs to be near the cloud and the leader if not necessary. In many cases, the tag just needs to be near the cloud and the leader is not necessary. In many cases, the tag needs to be near the cloud and the leader is not necessary. Disabling the leader. That happens in November. We'll see what happens. Disabling, the, disable the leader by selecting the tag and clearing the leader option in the options bar. It's good to note. It is. It's good to note. It's good to note. You can take that to the bank. It's good to note. That if your farm standards are to hide the cloud and you have the leader activated, you'll see the revision tags plus the leader, but no cloud. Since the leader and tags are connected, <coughs> excuse me, real world scenarios and uh, supplemental drawings, the process of making supplemental drawings, SDs, also known as supplemental sketches, SKs, entails making a change to an existing drawing and then issuing the change as a separate document during the construction process. Sometimes this can be a single 8.5 by 11 A4 or 11 by 17 A3 sheet where the new detail is then pasted or the old one on the document set. From a workflow perspective, this can be a little disruptive for two reasons. Placing a view into a small sheet to issue the individual view can lead to other problems because there is only one instance of the view. It requires you to take the view off your construction document set, construction document sheet, to place the view in a new sheet. The problem is that the new sheet detail is meant to replace a portion of your original document set, so your, sh your set is now out of sequence. You will need to remove the view from the sheet it was issued on temporarily, and then we'll put it back or duplicate the view and hope that you do not need to make last minute additional changes. A supplemental drawing, once issued, is like a snapshot in time. It becomes a numbered change made to the drawing set. 
at a given date. Because the model and all the views in the model always reflect the most current state of the project, making separate treaty sheets and views within Revit will show any additional changes to that view. As an alternative, you can reissue a, a you can reissue the full set. This is easiest for a Revit workflow, but it depends on your firm's standards for supplemental drawings. Now that's going to lead us into digital markups. I'm going to hold that here. We have lots to do for those of you that are following along at home or in your workplace. Again, we're in uh, the construction phase. As well as the centralization phase and design phase all at the same time. 